Hello, and thank you for joining us for another inspiring message from Journey Church. To learn more about our ministries, please visit us online at journeychurch.org. Now here is today's message. My name's Eric, and uh, I hope you're fired up to worship God this evening and to get into His Word. A couple of announcements before tonight's message. Um, as you sat down, hopefully you found some information about that pizza outreach for missions. So if you want to help support our missions team that's going to Haiti, there's a couple ways you could do that. You could buy one of those pizzas. You can go out there to the kiosk and you could donate some money and click missions as you do. And we'll allocate it towards that. What a wonderful way to help that team go to Haiti. God is up to some great stuff and we can't wait to hear what he's going to do with them. Many people had asked about the journey stickers for your cars. We just got another batch in, so feel free to grab those. They're out there at the Welcome Center, and you can pick them up absolutely free. Just remember that once you put them on, you got to drive real nice. You know, so that way the people, people won't be saying Because every night we, we have got a couple calls. I mean, somebody with a journey church sticker cut us off. Yeah, and, like, and I think it was you. And I'm like, no, no, she's not. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, it'll help you drive better. No tickets. Hallelujah. Yeah. Father, we just come before you with humbled hearts tonight as we prepare our hearts for your word. We ask you that you would give us eyes to see and ears to hear on this topic of community, Lord. Would you knit us together? Would you draw us into your presence, Lord God? And would you just make us a family under your lordship for the glory of God that lives on mission? In Jesus' name. And everybody says... Amen. So we've opened in prayer. We're going to continue on in our Koinonia series tonight. We're going to talk about the essence of real Christian community. What does it mean to be a part of the body of Christ and be a member of the family of God? You know, last week we looked at some of the Apostle Paul and Peter's vision of what the church might look like. Not, don't, not only did we hear what it might look like, we heard about the history, and we know about the history of life-changing communities. We've seen in the Bible, and we've heard stories throughout the ages of how God worked through community of believers to change and transform cities, to change nations. We've heard about revivals of the past, and how many of you want to be a part of a revival in the present? You know, we just sang, He is the God of this city. Do you really believe that tonight? Do you believe that? Do you believe he wants to work through average, ordinary people like you and I to go out here and transform this city with the love of Christ? I do. That's why we do what we do. That's why we prepare for church each weekend. That's why we try to challenge you to live lives on mission. That's why we have small groups. We want to see the people of God live on the mission of God for the glory of God. The gospel is said to be the power of God unto salvation and let me tell you, it is still alive today. And man, we heard stories of that at Easter. I've got a couple of other stories to tell you tonight. Why don't I do it right from the beginning? Why don't I just share one? You know, I had, you know what the delight and highlight of my week was? I was up here last night, and one of the members of our congregation, he walks up to me, and he, he shakes my hand, and he goes, Eric, I wrote out my first JEA check ever. And I looked at him, I'm like, what do you mean by that? And he goes, you know, I'm 43 years old, and I live most of my life doing drugs and chasing after women, and I was living from couch to couch, and I was living homeless, and I wasn't living for the Lord, and this year the Lord saved me, and he changed my life, and I'm sober, and I'm not drinking, and I've got a job for the first time, and I'm living for the first time right off of San Jose, and he said, I wrote my first JEA check, and I got a bank account in Jesus' name. I'm like, Thank you, Lord. That's what it's all about. That's what community is about as we get to witness these lives change. So I get jazzed up about stuff like that. I get jazzed up when I see hurting people walk through the door and you hear about them some months later, how God touched them and changed them because people like you were willing to reach out in community and make a difference in their lives. Let's keep it up. So today I want to focus on some of the building blocks for life-giving and sustaining community. Foundations are incredibly important to the long-term health of the church. So let's start off with some scripture. Matthew 7, 24. Everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. 
and the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house, but it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house in the sand and the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat against that house and it fell and great was the fall of it. Who is the rock? We know it's Jesus Christ is the rock. And it's raining right now, so if your house is built on sand, you are in trouble tonight. They said there is an advisory out there for Clay County. I saw it come across my phone, right? FEMA, all that stuff. I get those little alerts from our disaster recovery team. So uh, the rain is literally falling. It's helping us make this analogy. And guess what? There are going to be some storms that come in your life. How many of you have experienced some storms in your life, right? There's challenges. There's difficulties. There's moments in our lives where we're going to feel like giving up, where it feels like there is no hope, but there is hope found in a relationship with Jesus Christ. He is the rock. He is the chief cornerstone. He is the one that we need to build our lives around. And that's what this section of scripture is attempting to tell us. See, if you're building your life on anything other than the rock, Jesus Christ, it will fail you someday. If you built your life on your health and your strength, it will fail you. If you build your life on your resources, the economies rise and fall, right? Sometime and some point in your life, you will find trouble. And the Bible tells us that we need to put our hope on the rock, the solid foundation of Jesus Christ and his word. And it tells us that we need to put his word into practice. You know, earlier Greg was reading from a, a very crummy portion of scripture if you're on the wrong end of it, right? Right? I mean, and he's talking to these Pharisees, and he's saying, you're living like whitewashed tombs. You're out there, and you're proclaiming in our day and age the name of Jesus, but you're living like hell. What witness is that? We were created in the image and glory of the living God, and we're supposed to reflect him in all that we do, right? We need to live differently than the world, and our communities of believers need to be a different kind of reflection than what the world sees. Some of the most important building blocks of the gospel-centered community are the truth of God's word and the power of the gospel. As we look at the pages of God's word, we need only go three chapters to see community shattered as Adam and Eve fell in sin. You see, sin has a way of separating us from community. When you're living in sin, you tend to isolate yourself. You tend to stay away from other people. You don't want to hang around people lest you be found out in your sin. Or you start hanging around all the wrong kind of people that'll bring you down when you don't need to be, right? Sin has that way of separating. As we look at the fall in Genesis chapter 3, we see that we have this indwelling sin that comes inside of each of us. And each community that is followed after Adam has had this habit of falling deeper and deeper into sin and further and further away from God. We see it at work in our generation, in our day, as people live for themselves. They're lovers of money, lovers of lust, lovers of the things of this world, and they're not living for the King of kings and Lord of lords. But I think there's a people who God is calling out to live lives differently as a community of faith. And it'll so impact this community and this city that they will grieve if we do not exist. Because the presence of God will be gone and people out there who are called by his name are longing for this true sense of community that we're going to continue to build on today and in the coming weeks. See, when sin rises up, it it comes in the form of selfishness, neglect, isolation, pride, insecurity, and many other different perversions that destroy community. And let me tell you something, it often happens inside the walls of the church as well. And it's really sad when it happens inside the walls of the church when jealousy and strife and gossip and pride and position rise up. It can destroy a church faster than you can imagine. I've seen it happen, unfortunately. I've witnessed it before, and it's a very tragic thing. And we need to be protectors of community here where we love what God is doing, and we stand together in unity, and we care for one another, and we hear people speaking against community. We need to say, not in my house, in Jesus' name, right? We need there to be to protect what God is doing and keep it holy and sacred that he can continue to advance the kingdom of God through the people of Journey Church. See, this sin creates a few serious problems when it comes to relationships, especially if relationships are something that God has actually created us for. And I think you're going to find that tonight. Our broken Christian communities are a pretty poor reflection of who God is. It's pretty sad. 
The, Bi the Bible says they'll know us by our love for one another. Yet if you try to get churches together in Jacksonville, man, you will have a hard time getting them together to work with one another. There's rare exceptions, like last night, there was this group called Ascension that led worship here, and you had worship leaders from probably about seven or eight different churches that were all gathered together, and they go from church to church trying to break this barrier that we find in our community to see God break through and have churches work together in community so that our city could be a reflection of what God is doing in the hearts of his people. These broken communities are often not very life-giving at all. They're not breathing life into the people who go to them. They're um, not breathing life into their members. They sometimes even birth strife. It looks more like in some churches the work of the devil than the work of the Lord. And it can't be. We need to pray and ask God to continue to change this in the lives of our Christian communities. See, the greatest hope for any brokenness is found in the cross, in the gospel message that Jesus died on a cross and rose again for the forgiveness of our sins if we only repent and turn to him, our lives could be different. We could have this community, this biblical community restored within our own lives, within our fellowships, and between other churches. And that's something that we long to see. For Journey to truly be the kind of community God intended, we must be a community that is transformed by the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And we get glimpses of that, don't we? I mean, we just shared that story of a few moments ago about how this guy, his life was changed because you reached out and you invited him to come to church. You invited him to, to believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ. He came to know Christ and his life is being changed and transformed. You know, another one, I, I was standing today at, at this table. We all went and we ate lunch together and uh, it was a beautiful thing to see. We, we were over in a place called Alachua. We had rode, rode down there with the Journey Riders today. Hoot, hoot, those guys have a good time. And, you know, JC was sitting there with me, and there was a guy that was sitting at the table with us and still a bit unrefined. <laughs> Would you agree, the guy that was with us? And he says, you know, not too long ago, we drove by all those jails that were out there as you go out towards Stark and you go past them. And he said, not too long ago, that was my house. He says, that's where I lived. He says, my dad still lives there. He says, my dad's never going to get out of there. See, his life had been a legacy of, of handing down this jail's institutions and death. But Jesus touched his life, and he changed him, and he's sitting there, and he's been married for four years. He's like, I've been married for four years now. God's touched my life. He's changed me. I don't have to worry about being here. See, before, I'd be worried about how I was going to steal from you and figure out how I could take something. But today, I'm sitting here hanging out with you. So we had all the, you should have just seen the motley crew of us that was sitting there. We had guys that were out of jail. You had other guys that owned businesses that were sitting there. And they're all united under one banner. That banner was Jesus Christ crucified, the gospel touching and changing lives. He's doing it here in this community. Amen? Amen. Ephesians 2.15 speaks to this, that he might create in himself one new man in the place of the two, so making peace and might reconcile us both to God in one body through the cross, thereby killing the hostility. And he came and preached peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near, for through him we both have access in one spirit to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Christ Jesus himself, being the cornerstone in whom the whole structure being joined together grows in a holy temple in the Lord, and whom in him you are also being built together into a dwelling place for God by the Spirit. You see, you were once aliens. You were once not part of the family of God, and today you're standing here, and most of the people who are in this room, I have no doubt you're part of the family of God. See, I don't know how many of you feel this way. I do sometimes. I could be in a crowd of people that I don't know, and I feel really insecure. I feel like I don't fit in. Those old memories of when I was that kid, you know, they rise up within me, and we've joked about it from time to time, but for many of us, these feelings are real, that you were that last kid picked on the team. 